Good evening, everyone. Okay, so here we've got this suitcase where we're going to see what we need to do if we have forgotten the combination. Uh, it's one of these TSA keyed uh, three-digit combination locks. So if, you, if it's locked, you, you can't pull, uh, press the latch to unlock it. So this gives you, you know, you just got a couple of options. Um, of course, if you have the TSA key, you stick the TSA key in there to unlock it. Uh, I've never tried going to the airport to see if they'll unlock it for me. Uh, uh, but I have seen uh, some people downloading the 3D files off the internet, so they print their own key. Uh, another option which I've heard people do is uh, they go through all the possible combinations. There are a thousand. I guess statistically you only you know, need 500 on average. Uh, and then today we're going to talk about uh, a different way to do this. So, <clears throat> so whew, we got three tumblers, and normally, you know, they they all kind of look the same, right? But what we're going to do is we're going to zoom in here and take a closer look. And let's zoom in really good here. Let's focus on that first digit. Zoom, zoom, zoom. All right. So now we're at that first dial. I'm going to shine some light on the matter here. Okay. <clears throat> so I'm sliding the dial a little bit to the left so I can see through this little gap here, see behind it. And at the moment, it looks like... Oh yeah, shining the light from the bottom looks better. Um, it looks like it's just really smooth, nothing special from behind. Let's slide this to the number five and take a look. And now it looks a little bit different. I can see, stabilize a bit here. I can see right here, it looks like there's a circular hole. All right, so we're just gonna rotate this around all the way once to see what kind of, kind of tells there are behind it. So there's a circular hole one. Let's see the next one. Oh, this one's different. This one's got a it's kind of a longer, a longer shape, a longer, deeper opening. For number six. Oops, number seven. Come on, number seven. Nothing. Number eight. Nothing. Number nine. Nothing. Zero. Nothing. One. Oh, it looks like there's a notch here for number one. Okay, keep this in mind. This one's a notch, not the not a dot. Number two, nothing. Number three, nothing. Whoops, slipped. Number four, nothing. Um, we're over here. Number five. Again, we see that dot. Okay, so now let's go to the next one here. Second one, hmm. number seven, come on. I'm trying to get the light. Let's change the angle a bit here. Ooh, really shaky when it's zoomed in so much. Ooh, number seven, I've got that big gap. Eight, nothing. Nine, nothing. Zero, nothing. Number one, looks like nothing. Number two, oh, I see that notch, a small notch. Number three, nothing. Number four, nothing. Number five, nothing. Number six, we've got that round dot. Okay, so, uh, Let's choose to line these up on the round dot ones. Uh, so this one's, no, actually, let's choose the long, the big one, because that's more easily to, easy to identify. Big notch, come on, is it this one? Number seven, okay. And let's see, let's come back to this first dial here. We basically want to not line up all the, we want to match them there we go. Okay, so here for the first dial on the left-hand side, I can see that tall gap right here. 
And now let's look at number seven, the second dial. The second dial, come on, shadow. Ooh, where are we going here? Give me some light in the right place. Come on. I can see it a little bit. I just want to get it so it appears clear on the camera. Let me try adjusting the exposure. Can I adjust the exposure here? Oh yeah, there we go. I just turned up the exposure. Does that not help? Okay, so I can see that the behind the number seven to the right, I can see the vertical notch. There we go. So now I'm going to go to, over to this third one, the third dial, and I'm going to look for the same thing. I'm going to look for that vertical notch. Let's see, so zero, it looks empty, one, nothing, two, nothing, three, I've got a thin notch or a dot, I'm not sure, four, Nothing, five, nothing, six, nothing, seven, oh, nothing here, eight, oh, okay, great, and I've got that big notch here to the right of the gap of the third dial when I've got it set to number eight. So by itself, uh, right now it's six, seven, eight. Uh, this could possibly be the combination. Let's zoom out here and give it a try. Nope, it's not. It's still locked. Uh, but since I've lined up these three dials along that, uh, we've, we've picked the tab that was uh, the longer tab. So basically, we're just going to rotate them all at the same time. So we got six, seven, eight. So we'll, now we'll do. Seven, eight, nine. Give this a try. No. And we'll do eight, nine, zero. No. Nine, zero, one. No. Zero, one, two. No. One, two, three. Uh oh. There we go. Perfect. And now we open the box. So that step at the beginning where we were looking to the gap, through the gap at the edge of the dial, that's basically, you know, helping us align the three dials in the, uh, what is it, the lock, in the, co in the combination sequence, but we still have to rotate them all, all the way around to get to wherever it needs to unlock. So Anyway, I think that's a lot faster and a lot more interesting, at least mentally challenging, than trying all 1,000 combinations kind of mindlessly. Anyway, that's it for today. I'll see you all next time.